Hey folks, uh, it's been a while since I've done an update on this big green lathe here. Uh, mostly that's because, well, I haven't done anything on it. <laughs> but um, I have a project now that I really need to get started on soon, and it's going to require this lathe. Um, so I'll let you in on a little bit of what we've been doing recently. Now, if you remember from past episodes, when we took this tailstock apart, we found we had a major problem with this uh, threaded rod that goes in here and moves this quill in and out. Also, this, uh, this little piece just broke off from it. It was obviously cracked and uh, this just fell on the floor and, and just came off. So I, I need to reproduce one of these. And also, this lathe uses uh, a Morris taper that we um, can't identify. It's not a Morris taper, it, and it's not a um, it's not a common taper at all. And in fact, I think it was specifically made by the manufacturer this lathe. Um, so the question is, should we remanufacture a quill to accept a Morse taper, or should I stay with this quill and make my own tooling? Um, I'm not sure which way I want to go yet. The headstock is going to be extremely difficult to remanufacture. So even if I do make the tailstock able to accept a Morris taper, I'm still going to be stuck with um, obsolete tooling that needs to go in the headstock. I did get a big piece of steel here, uh, so I'll have it on hand if I do decide to make a new one. I also have a piece of threaded rod. This is Acme thread and it matches the thread on the broken piece. Uh, I'm going to use this to machine a new one of these. Also, if I convert this tailstock to a Morris taper, it's going to be considerably shorter. You can see these uh, pieces of blue tape on here. A Morris taper is traditionally falls in between these two pieces of tape, um, which means that my tooling is going to be shorter and that means that my my screw has to be that much longer. So that's something I'm going to have to take into consideration when I'm making a new one. Unless of course I just machine new tooling then this can stay the same. Originally I was going to consider taking this piece to a machinist and having a professional machinist remake one of these. Uh, I also considered taking it to a vocational center here in Rutland um, and have the students make a new one there for me. But the more I thought of those two options, uh, the more I thought I really would like to make it myself. Um, I'd like to learn a new skill and it's always fun to learn something new and I really like being self-reliant and uh, I thought this would be a great opportunity to learn something new. So what I've done is I've picked up this metalworking lathe. Uh, this is an old metalworking lathe from about 1954 I think it was made approximately. It was made by the South Bend Company. Um, it's a 9 inch lathe with 36 inches between centers. And um, I still need to get some tooling together in order to make a uh, replacement part. Um, there's a few things I need. Uh, a center rest is one of them. A uh, taper attachment and various cutting tips. Uh, my son is somewhat experienced with running these metal lathes, so he can help me out quite a bit when I try to do this. This lathe is in really excellent condition. 
Uh, the previous owner had taken it all apart, cleaned it all up, painted it. He had the bed reground, so any inconsistencies in the bed have been cleaned up. Any wear spots have been taken out. Uh, replaced all the the little oilers and the wicks that oil the bearings. I took the the spindle out of the headstock and I checked the bearings myself and they are in good condition. This particular lathe has um, the gearbox in it which means you can um, change gears right there instead of having to do it manually. Some of these lathes did not come with this feature and you had a series of gears in here that you could change. The reason for changing those is for cutting different threads. We picked up this little gadget here and this is a uh, uh, I don't know the name of it but it's from it's for cutting threads so it has a little dial on there so that you would know exactly when to engage the carriage so as you're cutting threads your cutter will stay right in the same spot instead of just making a mess and we've tested it out and it works pretty good we cut some threads with it in fact the threads that we cut are right here somewhere I think they're in here That was our test piece. As you can see, that looks good. We ran a nut on there, and it works works really well. Focus on those. There we go. Oh, obviously, I paid uh, considerably more money for the lathe than what it would have cost me to hire someone to make a new part. But like I said, I really want to be able to do it myself. Um, I'm also considering, since I have this lathe, I may be able to just get the taper attachment and make my own tooling. Uh, that might be a better way to go than just converting the tailstock to a Morris taper. But on the other hand, it's always nice to be able to just go to a tool catalog and, and order what you need instead of having to make everything. But on the other hand, it's nice to keep the equipment all original as well. So I'm still up in the air as to exactly what I want to do. I'll turn this on if you, anybody wants to listen to it run. Runs pretty smooth and quiet. It's got an old motor on it as well. I like the old motors better than the new motors. They always seem to run a lot quieter than the new ones for some reason. I think the horsepower rating is a little more accurate on them as well. Moves pretty slow. Um, of course that can be changed either by changing the speed here or in the gearbox. But you can see it's gone. We uh, put this belt on here. This is just an automotive belt. And it's a little too thick. Very difficult to move it over to this other pulley. 
I'm going to have to get a different belt on there. I'm thinking about just putting a, a link belt on. It also came with the table, which um, which is nice, but I don't really care for this bottom shelf. It's kind of on an angle, so it's really not uh, all that useful. I might change that. Might cut this right here, drop that down, and uh, I don't know. I might make some wooden panels to go around it and just kind of dress it up and have some doors in the front maybe I'll put some drawers in the top I don't know that'll be a future project but so we need this lathe to fix the other lathe <laughs> but this ought to be interesting also if um, well once I get the uh, the big green lathe going I have an idea for some products that I want to make on the metal lathe. Uh, I'd like to produce a line of solid brass candlesticks um, and this would be perfect for that. Also I might introduce some pewter into my my furniture and into my designs. Um, that would certainly be easy enough to machine on here if I don't cast it. So that's where we're at with the big green lathe project. Um, I will probably put this video into the playlist on there. And I'll keep you updated as we continue on. Um, I'll put up some videos of making the, uh, the screw and maybe the quill and let you know exactly what we decide to do if we're going to go with uh, a Morris taper or if we're going to use original tooling. So I'll talk to you later.